Kevin, thanks so much for joining us right here on The Right View. Tonight, we are joined by California Congressman and former chair of the Intelligence Committee, Representative Devin Nunes. Um, Congressman Nunes, thank you so much for joining us. There's so much to talk to you about, but we appreciate you being here on The Right View with us. Well, Lara, thank you so much. And I really appreciate when you came on my podcast uh, way back <laughs> last year. So it's the least that I could do. Now, of course, I thought I was coming on here because I thought I was going to be talking about your run for Senate in North Carolina. <laughs> well, to stay tuned. We, we're, maybe we'll get to that later in the show. We don't know. Um, but, but yes, a lot of exciting things happening uh, in, in the Trump family right now. But I want to start with you tonight uh, by talking about social media censorship. You really have been on the front lines of social media censorship, fighting back against it. And it seems like not a week goes by where we don't see these platforms, Congressman, weaponized to either censor conservatives or push a narrative supportive of the radical left's agenda. I think we all see it all the time. We know it very well. We feel it every single day. Now, just a few days ago, I think we all saw as well Congresswoman Maxine Waters telling protesters that we got to stay on the streets and get more confrontational. Now, I will remind everyone, this is the same Maxine Waters who claimed that Donald Trump was trying to create a civil war as grounds to impeach him. And yet, Congressman, the vast majority of the mainstream media and the heads of social media platforms are all silent on this. So I want to get your feedback on, on Congresswoman Waters, but also as a, a broader subject, can anything be done about the treatment of Republicans versus Democrats? Are you working on anything that might help us fight back? Well, look, it's I don't think I have to say this, but it's a very dark time in our nation's country. Uh, the, the merger of the radical left with big tech and big government is really a dangerous concoction. I never thought for the life of me we would be in this position. And I was one of the ones who actually detected this censorship early. Now, keep in mind, I was I had a, a small profile on social media, but it was very, very odd as I was in the news a, a bit and became a target of, of the left. Obviously, I noticed I started get, gaining followers, even though I didn't do a lot on social media. Uh, but then I was I started noticing that my views actually were going down. And that was the alarming thing is how how could I, my followers be going up, views be going down? And then we learned about shadow banning and the way that big tech uses algorithms to push your feeds below. And that was kind of that's, gosh, I guess that was in 2018 when we first noticed that. And then, it, of course, it got progressively worse. Now, one of the things that I did, so I was an early adopter to places like Rumble, uh, which is a video alternative platform to YouTube and also to Parler, which is which is a alternative to Instagram and and Facebook and Twitter. And of course, I think we all know what happened to Parler. They got nuked uh, off the all of the platforms off the app stores. Now, supposedly they're going to get back on. But just to, you know, I was on just some easy, basic numbers, Laura, I think that'll put it in perspective for you on YouTube. I was on there for four years, had about 10,000 subscribers. I've been on Rumble now for, oh, I guess since last August, and I have almost 700,000 subscribers in just a few months. Uh, the same thing with Parler. So I was on Twitter for, I don't know, I think since Twitter opened uh, back in 2008 or nine or something like that. I uh, had 1.3 million followers. That got nuked down, like 100,000 followers got evaporated. I think they went in and and kicked a lot of uh, Republicans and conservatives off of Twitter at some point. Uh, well, today on Parler, even with them being down, I have 3 million followers. Now, wow. that's not possible unless I was being censored. I mean, it's it's clear circumstantial evidence. Of course, I've taken a lot of them to court. I continue to take media companies to court uh, and we're, we're fighting through those battles. So I've been asking the judicial branch of government to step in and stop this nonsense but of course, it doesn't. It doesn't appear like, uh, you know, we're gaining much ground uh, when it when it comes to. It seems like the media just doesn't care, and the big tech companies don't care. Just to and just to finish up on the point with, I mean, if if I had said anything like what Waters said oh. the other the other night, if I had done anything even remote like that, 
it would be the front page of every media organization. I'd be censored. And oh, by the way, I'd probably be kicked off my committees here in the House of Representatives. And that's, uh, that's what we're dealing with. So tomorrow, we're going to bring up a resolution uh, to censure Waters in the House. I, I believe it, it'll be sometime this week. Uh, we will see that we have a very close close numbers here in the House. The, there's only the Democrats only have about a five seat majority. So we'll see if there truly are any so-called moderate Democrats that want to uphold uh, what has become kind of the norm here. I mean, they kind of set the precedent uh, for this type of activity of censuring people uh, for things that are far uh, in a way not even close to this. If you'll remember, uh, President Trump, I think his exact words were, go peacefully and protest. That's a far cry from what we heard from Waters uh, over the weekend. That's right. Uh, he said, we will peacefully and patriotically make our voices heard. That is, you're right, very different than what Congresswoman Waters had to say, where she encouraged people to get out in the streets and cause chaos. And um, it, it's really sad. But look, I, I think you're right. I'm, I think everyone will be tuned in to see how hypocritical the Democrats really are, because if they are at all honest people, then they will censure her. They will say that there should be some repercussions for this. After all, they impeached my father-in-law over far, far less than this, something that wasn't even on the same plane. Um, so let's see what they have. Let's see how hypocritical they really are. But I want to take a second and say thank you uh, to you, Congressman Nunes, because without the work that you did, you just kind of took us through some of the things that have happened over the past several years, really kind of exposing these social media companies for what they were doing. We, we might not know about a lot of these things had you not you know, really gone in head first and, and exposed a lot of what was going on. I think we had all been feeling it as conservatives. I know for me, um, I look at the numbers on some of my social media um, platforms and they don't move at all. They, they pretty much stay the same. And I don't really buy that when they were skyrocketing for so long, all of a sudden they're not going anywhere. Um, but I think what you said is exactly right. And, and without what you did, I don't know that any of us would know exactly what was going on. Um, there was something else that I think was very frustrating to a lot of us over the course of the campaign. We saw firsthand the power that these companies hold when they censored the Hunter Biden laptop story from being discussed right. anywhere online because of how damaging it would likely be to Joe Biden's campaign. And look, you had a front row seat to the Russia collusion ho hoax, the Mueller investigation, the impeachment hoax, all of which led to absolutely nothing except millions and millions and millions of wasted taxpayer dollars so I want to get your uh, sense on things. How do you feel about the treatment that Hunter Biden has received mm -hmm. from the media well, and journalists in comparison? Yeah, so that's kind of the next step. So you know, what, were the, what were the origins of me figuring out that big media or that a big tech was censoring me? Well, because I went through it and I have real data, real information. I mean, it's kind of clear when you when you have... 80,000 followers, for example, I think is what I have on Facebook. I don't, I don't really use Facebook or Twitter or Instagram anymore because I'm just, just kind of useless. But my friends and my cousins that maybe have three or 400 followers, of which I follow all of them also, for example, on Facebook, they would be getting more likes on posts than I, than right. I would. Right. It's so, so crazy. So I would, so, and, and people started telling me, telling me that they couldn't find my posts, that sort of thing. So then fast forward to the, you know, so I brought, I was one of, I was the first one, first, you know, prominent political figure to bring a lawsuit against the big tech companies. And of course, we're still fighting that out in, uh, in, uh, in, in the courts. But what happened, then, then they escalated it to the censoring of the Hunter Biden laptop scandal. It really was a scandal that would derail any campaign. Now you're you're starting to see some of the some of the good work that places like Judicial Watch are doing and Project Veritas, who just exposed uh, what a fraud CNN is. And of course, I'm also suing CNN, and you know that of course is is working its process. You know they've slandered me, said that I was doing nefarious things with Russians and Ukrainians, and had me in places like Vienna, uh, when in fact you know I could easily prove 
uh, with travel records, and we you know presented all this to the court and records of of you know I don't go anywhere as a member of Congress as you can imagine, especially overseas without escorts from the military or the State Department. So the idea that they would throw me and try to smear me, and that was right at the same time of the Ukraine hoax. So I knew what they were up to, but we now know with the Hunter laptop uh, story, I think um, they clearly did that to sway and influence the election. From there, that's not, I don't know that that's even the worst of it. I mean, it gets worse when you kick the leader of the free world, President Trump, off of social media. And you have to remember most of the mainstream legacy fake news and governments, by the way, they see Twitter as a way of communication, like an official way of communicating. A lot of people, that's how they communicate. So how on earth can you can you express your First Amendment rights as a U.S. citizen, but most importantly, being an elected official to either be banned completely or shadow banned uh, like I have been? Uh, it's completely wrong. And then you go past that and the platforms that I discussed earlier, places like Rumble and Parler, well, then they kick parlor off the app store. Now, th- these are just, its this is why I say I don't want to be negative on your show, uh, but we have to see the world as it is, not the way yeah. we want it to be. And it's a very dark time right now in our country's history. No, we, we absolutely have to address it. And that's why we want to talk about these things. I often think, gosh, if you took a step back and we weren't all so immersed in this right now, and you looked at just what you said there, the fact that not only did they kick the leader of the free world, President Donald Trump, off of one of these platforms while he was president of the United States, but then they went so far as to kick off Parler because they didn't, because the app stores didn't agree with, with Parler giving, I don't know, platform to conservatives. They had a lot of very questionable um, you know, reasons that they did this. I think if people took a step back and looked at it, they would say, oh my gosh, this is really scary stuff because look, the the reality is the mainstream media goes along with it. And, uh, you know, so many people go along with it because, well, it's helping their cause right now, but it could happen to anybody. If they could do this to Donald Trump, they could do it to anybody. I did an interview on this show with my father-in-law a couple of weeks ago and Facebook would not allow it to run on Facebook. It, it It's so crazy that this is happening and we live in the United States of America. This is these are things that happen, Congressman, in communist countries. And and I think you're right to call it out. We have to continue to talk about it. We have to make it a big deal because the media wants to sweep it under the rug. They want you to look the other way. They don't want people to stay on top of these things. But thank goodness you are. And just for a moment to go back to it, this Hunter Biden laptop story was a scandal. It was such a huge deal. And I think at the root of it, maybe is that it's a a huge deal because Joe Biden, the current leader of the free world, could be compromised because of a lot of things that were on that laptop. Could he not? Yeah. So there's a there's what you're talking about is there's a two tiered system of government across the board here, whether it's at the Department of Justice on who gets investigated, uh, whether it's the treatment in the media. And I think it's important to understand what the media really is. And I've had this discussion actually with President Trump numerous times and a lot of the folks in the White House. You have to see, and my colleagues here in Congress, by the way, you have to see and understand what the media is. The media works for the Democratic Party. They're operatives that are spread all throughout. You don't move up. Even the ones that want to be honest journalists, they know Uh, that if they actually write a story, they get told what to write. And if they don't perform and they don't write it, they're going to lose their jobs. And, you know, plenty of them actually will privately tell you that uh, because if you're at a prominent publication, you are going to do the bidding of what the overlords want you to do. So the Democrat Party runs the media, or at least 95% of the media. That's who's developing the content. Then when you plug it through to the major social uh, media companies, the big three, they really control how people are receiving their information. So I call it a disinformation funnel is how I is how I describe it. And the one thing that we haven't talked about that's that I think is also important for the viewers to understand is Google. So we talked a little bit about YouTube. Google owns YouTube. But understand that when you go and Google something, I know it's become kind of a verb and everybody says, oh, well, Google it. Well, I got off Google three years ago 
One, they're sucking up all of your data and selling it other places. And it's, it's actually almost impossible. I say that I'm off Google. Google's everywhere. They surround us. It permeates us. everything. They're, I know. Yeah. You're 100% right. <laughs> so they suck up all of our information. And then they're, all, they're biased in how they report. So yep. when, if, you, if you came from, from another universe somewhere and you came down to earth and you Googled my name, uh, you would probably wonder why uh, you know I'm not uh, in jail, and in fact, you have all the major publications have either called for me to be expelled, indicted, uh, it, you know, it examined, uh, investigated, uh, numerous numerous charges. So, the point being that Google is clearly biased. Uh, what they're doing is is they allow for fake news sites like Wikipedia where a bunch of left-wingers can go on there and doctor up Wikipedia sites. And then that's what Google uses in their algorithm. So it's quite convenient that what they can say is that, oh, no, no, we, we don't. We just, we just have an algorithm and we just go off of, of, of hits. Well, yeah, Wikipedia is one of the most visited sites. And I think people have to understand it's not just Google. It's not just their algorithm. It's also major sites across the web like Wikipedia that are completely fraudulent. Now, you don't have to take my word for it. Actually, one of the founders of Wikipedia has actually said as much. So, look, I always try to, I'm so thankful that you're giving me this longer format that we can walk through uh, these issues. And hopefully, I think we just have to continue to talk about it, continue to uh, bring cases before the courts. And we have to hope that the judicial system will get involved. And of course, uh, if we can win uh, the 2022 midterm elections, Hopefully we can put a stop to some of the madness, even though we probably won't be able to fix it. But you are finally seeing people that are drafting legislation and introducing legislation. And I believe that Republicans are finally waking up uh, to the social media problem. Now, my next goal is to get them to wake up to not talk to the fake news. And I always tell them, would you walk into the Democrat National Committee headquarters and do an interview with their lawyers? If the answer is no, then why the hell are you talking to the fake news media that runs around the swamp here? Yeah, by, by the way, it's a, it's a great point. I'm so glad you brought up what you did with Google and Wikipedia. I was actually thinking of it as you were saying it, like right before you said it, because you're so right. I, people who don't know me would Google my name. By the way, I haven't Googled my name, Congressman, in years because exactly yeah. what you're saying is so spot on. It is horrifying to see some of the misinformation, the lies, the slander, while you're at it suing CNN, you can sue them for all of us because they have said lie after lie about every single person in my family. Obviously, my father-in-law, any little bit of information they got, they didn't fact check anything with any of us. They just ran it out there as though it was, you know, straight out of the Bible, straight from the word, the mouth of God himself. It is so crazy to see this stuff. And Wikipedia is disgusting. The things that people can go on there and say about you, and and by the way, they don't do you any favors with the picture on there ever. I feel like <laughs> they also just go out of their way to find a bad photo of you and, and put terrible information up there about you. I have been so proud to live my life as a good person. I'm proud of the things I've done. I have never had a run in with the law. I've never had any issues. Yet what you're saying is so, so accurate because I agree. If somebody came from another planet, landed on Earth and Googled my name alongside yours, they would say the exact same thing about me. It's it's really scary you, stuff. You know, the thing they probably wouldn't find or be very hard to find would be the interview that I did with you last year. That's probably right. If you Google both of our names, it wouldn't come up. It would just be all kinds of phony and fake, fake scandals. But I will tell you, I've been, uh, I did a lot of campaigning in North Carolina uh, for uh, both for the Republican Party and for the Trump campaign. And I will tell you, I was in Wilmington twice and they oh. love you. They love you there. So <laughs> No, that's my hometown. Those are my people. Well, I'm so happy to hear that. Thank you. Um, I, I want to get to one other thing because you also recently made headlines when you pointed out the absolute insanity of the Democrats and the intelligence community focusing on partisan actions against U.S. citizens instead of bigger threats around the world. You said that this is dangerous for our nation, which probably is an understatement. But maybe you can elaborate on that a little bit more. Well, so 
obviously we're all familiar with, and I'm sure your audience is, and the what happened to the Republican Party back in 2015 and 16. And we always have to remember that's what it is. If you spy on one presidential campaign, you're spying on all of them. So they spied on the Trump campaign. They spied on people who were volunteers, by the way, which is which is really outrageous. Think of all the, the, the volunteers, yeah. people that want to get involved in politics. Awful. And then know that if you're a conservative or Republican, uh, the FBI has a history of spying on you. It's almost then, as though they don't want any volunteers to come help Republicans, Congressman. I'm a little, <laughs> right? Seems that no, way. No, I, I think it is. And I hope, you know, Carter Page, I know, has brought a lawsuit. I mean, what, what they did to that poor man is is just just outrageous. General Flynn, all of them. I mean, the, the whole, uh, anybody who was associated with the Trump uh, campaign or the Trump presidency. And I mean, even today, they continue to go after people and target people that were high level within the Trump administration to ensure that they don't get jobs. And, you know, a lot of people would be really sought after if they had high level positions uh, in an administration. And it's very difficult for those people to 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 get work today. And that's, you know, that's just another another problem with all this. But what what so what they're doing for the first time is the foreign threats are supposed to be the use of our military intelligence, CIA, et cetera, et cetera. And so this is the first time that we've seen the director of national intelligence through what's called the National Counterterrorism Center, put unbelievable resource, resources and produce reports, both classified and unclassified, on domestic terrorism. And of course, you know that's directly using intelligence services to spy on Americans and, and to do analysis of Americans. And in any normal age, the, the, the left in this country uh, conservative Democrats, the media, they'd be going nuts if George W. Bush, for example, said that, well, the anti-war people are, remember we used, I forget what they were called, the, uh, they used to wear pink or whatever, the code pink or something like that. Uh, and they would, you know, they would come in, they'd disrupt the Congress, they'd break in, they'd harass us. All of this happened. Can you imagine? If George W. Bush said, told the director of national intelligence and said, we got to go out there, we got to find what these are doing, these are, people are a danger to, to the United States of America. Now, look, at any given time, there's a lot of dangers out there, but that's why we have local law enforcement. That's why we have the FBI. It's why we have local law enforcement. It's why we have Capitol Police. And you run investigations that way. The idea that they would not only produce reports from the intelligence services, and then brag about them, put them out there, and now hold hearings on it. So we're going to have a hearing on this nonsense. Uh, well, we had one last week where they, where the Democrats, of course, talked about domestic terrorism, and then uh, we're going to have one, I think, later this week on domestic terrorism. This is we're the House Intelligence Committee. I mean, it's bad enough that we that we let Mueller and all these people skate with crimes uh, that, that's still being investigated. We hope that there will be some indictments. Uh, then we turned it into the House Impeachment Committee. If, and I think we all recall that. Well, now we're actually going after our political enemies. That's what the Democrats are targeting their political enemies with the House Intelligence Committee. In the, t in the meantime, where we've got troops amassing at the border of Ukraine, Russian troops. Remember, it was, it was always Russia, Russia, and how weak oh, yeah. Trump was on Russia and Trump and Putin were buddies. Well, it ends up, no, Hunter Biden, getting back to that, he was the one that was buddies with the Russians. That's right, Why three and a half Biden million dollars from the mayor of Moscow's wife. Yeah, and why is Biden not doing anything right now with the the Russians? He's not saying anything. Nothing's happening. There's a hundred thousand troops or whatever the media is reporting. Uh, there, he's not saying anything. It was Obama and Biden that let Putin take control of Crimea, part of Ukraine. Uh, that country is a complete mess now because of what the Russians are doing there. But you don't you don't hear them saying anything. Why is that? You've got the Chinese that are putting out ships day after day. Their navy is now bigger than ours. Uh, they're not saying anything there. What do we not know about the 10% for the big guy that is mm -hmm. clearly Joe Biden? What what happened to that? And then of course, they're re-engaging with Iran. So Iran is laughing at them uh, because they're not even coming to the table because the, the Biden administration wants to put in their failed Iran nuclear deal. So, and then in Afghanistan, they're setting these arbitrary dates, just like Obama and Biden used to do before where they call red lines here and call for dates there. And I called their foreign policy, I called it on Sunday, 
their foreign policy, instead of being something strong like peace through strength, it's something more like speak really loudly, say a lot, and carry a twig. <laughs> That's so accurate. By the way, it's like when I see parents threatening their kids and then there's no follow through. You say you're going to take the toy away. You never take it away. They don't learn their lesson. They don't respect you. They're never going to listen to you. It's exactly the same thing. But I, That's I me, by the way. I'm, I'm that person. So I have three little girls <laughs> and I'm the one I speak loudly and I do nothing. Oh, My no. Wife, my wife, of course, is the enforcement uh, mechanism in our in our household. Well, it's tough. You know, you don't want to. You uh, never want to get mad at girls. It's so hard. It's, of course, little girls. Forget it. You're done. You might as well just hang it up now. It's all over yeah. for you. At least I got one of each to to balance it out. But um, well, look, we're we're really proud to have someone like you, Congressman. You know, out there speaking the truth, following up on all of these things, making sure that things do not get swept under the rug. Again, like the media continues to try to do with these things, they want to basically it seems like they want to brainwash Americans and they, they want to create a, an alternative narrative to what is actually going on out there. Distract us with a, a lot of nonsense when we do have legitimate and real threats out there all across the world. We are, are, are at just the beginning of a Biden presidency and it's already so bad and so horrifying in so many ways. So I wanna say on behalf of Americans, thank you for standing up and speaking the truth and continuing the fight that you started a long time ago. I know you've been at this for a long time. It's really impactful and you inspire a lot of people. So thank you for continuing that. And I wanna say thank you as well for coming back on The Right View. We love to have you here. So uh, we hope you'll come back soon. Well, th th thank you very much. And I, I really appreciate the opportunity and uh, thank you and your family for continuing to fight. I know it's not easy. Oh, well, that's, that's what we gotta do. Every single American, every patriot that loves this country, we all have to fight in our own way. So thank you to uh, Congressman Devin Nunes for coming on the show tonight. And thank you to everybody at home, as always, for joining us. We'll see you back here next time for more of The Right View. Oh, <laughs>